This is the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening all, I'm Shishina Rool. As always, it is so great to have you with us. Topping news, the island of Grand Bahama playing host to another regional political leader. The official arriving as the country marks its 40th anniversary of independence and as the government explores the implementation of a value-added tax. Joan Davis Roll reports. The Minister of Grand Bahama, the Honorable Dr. Michael Davo, welcoming the former Prime Minister of Barbados, Owen Arthur, during a courtesy call Monday morning. His visit coming at a time when policy changes are taking place globally, and Arthur known as a reformer, as he was instrumental in impacting the tax regime of his country. According to Minister Davo, his visit is indeed significant. It's really a pleasure for us at the Ministry for Grand Bahama to welcome to Grand Bahama the former Prime Minister of Barbados, Owen Arthur. Uh, who is here today on Grand Bahama to address the chamber uh, as it relates to VAT and a Barbados perspective. We're very pleased to have him on the island of Grand Bahama. He's no stranger to this country. Uh, he's quite familiar with uh, pr former Prime Minister and uh, Prime Minister uh, Perry Christie. Uh, today should be a very exciting day. Uh, he has uh, a wealth of knowledge. Uh, with his past experience as a former lecturer at the University of the West Indies and his position as Prime Minister of Barbados and the one who implemented the VAT in Barbados at the time. The former Prime Minister on Grand Bahama for a one-day lecture series on the topic value-added tax, VAT. He noted that the Bahamas is the only country in this region yet to make VAT a reality. He expressed his delight in being in the nation's second city. I really am pleased to be able to be part of the celebration of your 40th anniversary of your independence in these significant ways. I was given the opportunity to discuss the philosophy of nation building, but this assignment on at Freeport, I think, is even more important. I may had the good fortune to be a Prime Minister of Barbados on three occasions, and amongst, I hope, some of my more enduring legacies will be the fact that I had to reform the country's tax system to make it um, compatible with the requirements of living in today's world. And the introduction of a value-added tax in Barbados, the reform of the system where the, the VAT replaced 11 forms of taxation, I believe will be one of the enduring um, legacies that I will leave behind in Barbados. I must also indicate to you that I had, um, in 1994, to manage Barbados' ascension to the WTO and do it at the same time as we we're planning to introduce a value-added tax. President of the Grand Bahama Chamber of Commerce Barry Malcolm says the former Prime Minister's visit to Grand Bahama comes at a pivotal time in this country's history. The Prime Minister has such a rich history not only uh, as a policy maker but also as a lecturer in economics uh, and has a, a unique a double perspective on how these type of tax systems can be implemented uh, within a country. Um, the discussions we're having uh, on VAT and all the related issues, WTO accession and the like, are very critical to our growth as a country. As has been said, um, re resolving, working through, or arriving at solutions that, that work for the country as a whole, uh, especially the citizenry and the business community, are critical. Uh, to the growth and development uh, of our country at this time. Joan Davis Roll, Seddon S Network News. Well, this afternoon, the former Barbados Prime Minister was a guest of honor at a luncheon hosted by the Grand Bahama Chamber of Commerce. His focus, the World Trade Organization, and the implementation of a value added tax. While addressing members of the Grand Bahama Chamber of Commerce, former Prime Minister of Barbados Owen Arthur spoke in detail about accession of membership in the World Trade Organization. Bahamas will have to undertake careful research, therefore, to negotiate the best terms of engagement across such a wide field of economic activity. For the terms of conditions under which the Bahamas accede to the WTO by way of its GATS commitment, will bear heavily on the future prospects of the Bahamian economy more than any other undertaking. You are becoming, you are a service economy. You will have to negotiate a part of a general agreement in trade and services across 12 sectors, 155 subsectors, and four modes of service delivery. 
He adds that the accession of membership in the World Trade Organization, as well as the new value-added tax system, which is set to come on stream in 2014, will present a new spirit of governance in the Bahamas. The building of a national consensus on these two matters goes beyond the need for the adoption and support for some technical positions based only on empirical findings. It requires that where common ground exists on the stated position of otherwise contending parties, such common ground must be recognized and agreed to be held. He notes that the decisions taken by the government and citizens will change the structure of the economy forever. It will be a great cause, but great causes are never won by doubtful people. And it's a cause which I'm sure the government and the people of the Bahamas are more than capable of winning.